Oh my god, it's wobbling. Why is it wobbling? Hi everyone, welcome to another studio vlog. Today I'm going to show you some bits on my new book. I'm working on the character design still. Uh, it's taking a while because um, I'm working on it a little bit by a little bit by a little bit by a little bit. Um, and so I think I've got to a good stage now and I like the character um, and how it looks like. I think we now need to start with the story. Um, might be a really backwards way of doing it. It's probably, it probably is. Um, the way that I work is more based around characters um, and also just creating the visualization or a bit of it before I actually start with this story, just to kind of give me a feel of what I want to do. Um, as you know, I started off with the sad, the sad door, this guy. Um, and that was a couple of years back now. Um, now I know that I want it to be a story about depression, um, sadness, loneliness, um, but I need to, I need to create a story around this door now. Uh, I think that's probably going to be the hardest part of it. So I'm going to show you how I've been getting on with the character design. I precariously balanced my camera on a glass, um, so I hope it doesn't fall off. Um, but so the first thing that I need to do after doing my sketch out of the character is I need to go in and ink over with my favourite pen. Um, this is a Sakura Micro Micron, sorry. Um, in I believe it's called Sepia, but it's this beautiful brown. Um, I'll pop a link in the description below. Um, when I brought them, I brought them I think direct directly from Japan. Um, because it was a lot cheaper and you got about fifty of the pens in one box. Um, and. I use them all the time so it's been a lifesaver for me. When I inked out my character I was just thinking of keeping everything as fluid as possible. I don't really like to keep things neat and tidy anymore. I used to really try and keep things really perfect looking. Um, however I really like the way that my hand wobbles and uh, naturally just more wobbles. <laughs> that sounds weird um, but you know what I mean so it's, you've got that movement in a line. Um, I really like that. I'm working with it. That's how I like things now. Um, I added a bit more texture into the door, a um, bit of wood texturing or how I would do wood texturing, um, just some natural curly bits um, and some lines for the wood effect. Um, and then the tendrils that are coming out here are the vines or some sort of trailing plant coming out over the side. Um, I was thinking maybe it'd be like ivy, but um, at the moment I'm thinking it's just going to be a non-descriptive plant that has overgrown coming out of the cracks in the walls and spreading over the door, making it a, little, a little bit more abandoned. Um, and I really enjoyed doing these bits because it's just quite satisfying to go along the line and just create these little leaves um, and then I do that down the bottom as well. Um, the idea was basically so that it would have cracks around. When I draw the wall in the part of the house as well where the door is going to be, it'll be that the cracks will have plants coming out of them. So I use my trusty Queen Air Gold watercolour um, to, by Windsor & Newton if you want to use it. Um, I did explain it in my other video um, previously but I'll pop a link below as well so if you are interested in any of these paints then you might want to purchase them maybe. Um, so I do my base colour which is always Queen of Gold in most of my paintings to be honest um just to give it that beautiful golden glow and then i came in with a really beautiful it's actually called intense blue <laughs> um by winsor and newton um and i use that just to as the base color for the door i think the door itself should be blue because um blue is is uh sort of relating to the sadness and depression of the story um whether or not the color of the door will change i'm not sure um when it gets re um uh, revamped and made up again when someone moves in i'm feeling he probably will um because i think that the blue that the previous people have put on 
um, would have been flaky and not very nice anymore. And everyone seems to paint their doors anyway, um, just as a change. So they'll probably get a revamped colour. But the first colour that we've got for this character is going to be the in intense blue. Um, and then when I got to the panes of glass, I wanted to keep with the blue theme or the cool themes. So I've gone with a, a mixture of blues, yellows, greens. Um, and I didn't wait for anything to dry because I wanted everything to kind of blend together to make it look a little bit more, I would say, like a dusty watercolour where everything starts to get mucky, um, but not spread around too much. Um, and it gives it a little bit of a watery look as well, um, which is nice for glass because, uh, as we know, glass is, is see-through and it's... I'm not really sure exactly how I would make it look more see-through um, on a flat piece of paper. Um, however, I do like this idea and whether or not I will do that in the refurbished door afterwards, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how it works, uh, but I really like the colours so far with this. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll just pat off some of the colour. Sometimes it's a bit too intense in some areas or it pulls in some areas. So I use a bit of kitchen towel just to dab off some bits of watercolour and it seems to help just to give it a bit of a um, glisten um, or shining or maybe just a dust, dusty sort of look to it, uh, which I really like with this one. So yeah, that's how I've got on with this. I think the next um, step is for me to start creating a story around the character, which I'm really, really, really excited about. Um, but it's going to take me a while to get things together and sort that out. So I will keep you updated with this story. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching me creating the character. We also went to a festival and this was actually my first festival. <laughs> so I had a really good time, um, but I didn't know what to expect. All I could imagine it being like is what you see festivals to be like on TV or in TV shows. It was a very small festival. It's a deer stock festival. Um, I'll show you some clips that I did manage to get because I didn't really do much filming, to be quite honest, or take many pictures because I was having too much fun, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but um, it was amazing. I loved it so much. And there was good company um, and the sun was shining and it was lovely. And I would definitely go again. I really want to go to another festival now. So we're here at Deerstock Festival. I've um, never been to a festival before. So this is the first time. So wish me luck. <laughs> much music around that I'd never really even given the time of day I well I enjoyed this so much because it was music that I wouldn't usually listen to um because there was all sorts of different music there was like uh, funky jazz and there was um stuff that was more country-fied and there was stuff that was a bit more rocky um and a lot of it was stuff that I would never thought I'd really enjoy to listen to, but uh, I really enjoyed it. It was amazing and such a, a lovely, friendly festival, um, very family orientated as well. Lots of little children running around, um, but such a lovely vibe to the whole festival. It was so beautiful. <laughs> it was a great festival to go to especially as my first festival and it's definitely made me want to go to more so i have also decided to print my cards um i was going to create three different designs i however like the first design the most and would like that as a card so i'm going to try that first so i'm ordering a bunch of those cards first. So I'm ordering off of six print 
and this website's the best I think for what I want because they do art cards and I think that we're going to need art card printing quality because I'd like the watercolour to look really good. So that's how I'm getting on with that. I am going to show you what they look like when they come back to me. I hopefully won't take too long for them to come in the post and uh, then we can check them out together and then hopefully if they're good quality then I will or how I want them anyway then I can get them on sale and it'll be me starting to sell my stuff. It was a short one today guys but I hope you enjoyed uh, the vlog today. Um, I hope you subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you can see my next vlogs because I do intend to keep these up and I do want to keep vlogging because it does actually make it really easy for me then to think back on what I am doing and how far I'm getting on with things. Um, it's like a diary, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today and I hope to see you in another one soon. Bye!